Welcome back to Man vs. Machine. I am Theo Greminger, and I'm joined by Dario Ofstein. Dario and I, and Bradley Stalder, and Billy Muzio, we have been bringing you some very high-quality content here on Man vs. Machine, some very analytical takes. We've been going deep into statistics, going deep into projections. We've had some spirited debates on players. We've looked at teammate arbitrage. We've looked at your best stacks. We've, we've gone pretty highbrow, and today we're taking a step back and we're going bold. Dario and I are staring into the crystal balls, and we are going to give you our bold predictions for the 2023 seasons. Dario, right now, is on his adventure across the United States. Dario, what state are you in now? I'm in Maine. I'm actually, you, you might see it's raining out here behind me. I'm in, in Acadia National Park and it's just been stormy all day. But yeah, we're, we're way up there. Gone a long way from LA. So Dario is doing something extremely cool this season. Dario is going to go to every single NFL stadium. He's going to see how many games you're going to see this year, Dario. 31 games is the plan. I love it. And we've we've been doing a number of announcements across player profiler twitter um you've heard of player profiler on espanol with mauricio gutierrez uh the fantasy empire has actually dropped two episodes nando defino and chris Ficaro. we have dear miss fantasy with tara roberts starting next week and we're going to do an announcement for this on the social media but if you listen to man vs machine we have an exciting show announcement dario is undertaking and doing something very very cool Dario, why don't you let the Man vs. Machine audience know what you have planned for the season? Yeah, so this show is going to be unlike anything that anyone in fantasy football has done, I'm pretty sure. So I'll be, As I'm traveling across the United States, going to all these football games, I'm also going to be doing in-person interviews with all of your favorite fantasy analysts, some of the biggest names in the industry, some of the Roto Underworld people who are working their butts off behind the scenes that you guys have maybe never seen on a podcast before. So we're going to get a whole wide range and sample of the fantasy football industry. This show is going to be called Fantasy Football Across America. Really excited to get to hang out with everyone in person. I think that, you know, I just went to the expo for the first time, and that was so awesome to kind of really see that in-person camaraderie of the fantasy football industry. So just bringing little bits and pieces of that as I travel across the country and bringing you guys exclusive interviews with all your favorite fantasy analysts, I'm really excited to do that aspect of the road trip this season. I think it's awesome. I think it's going to be tremendous. It's going to be a great show to be able to watch here on YouTube and, and, and player profiler, Instagram player profiler, Twitter. It's going to be very cool as a podcast version. Uh, Dario getting a chance to talk to a lot of very cool analysts, including a very, very sharp analyst on long Island, myself so dario's dario's gonna come to long island and see me and he is going to go to connecticut and see matt kelly the podfather and you are going to see maddie kiwoom um as well i know that's all in the first like run that's all in the first two weeks yeah it's gonna be awesome so uh i i told my wife that we're gonna have dario's uh van is gonna be parked in front of our house or in our driveway we might give you the driveway dario um and that's gonna be for a while that's gonna be super cool but i'm really excited I think this is going to be really cool for you. Um, I'm really excited to see you uh, in like a one-on-one setting with these guests. Um, you've crushed it here on Man vs. Machine. I know you're going to crush it with this podcast. Um, so everybody look for it. The podcast version, I would say, is probably going to be available sometime in the next you know, 10 days, two weeks. The, the first show should be debuting probably next week, right, Dario? Yeah, the plan is, I mean, there will be first episode, hopefully recording later this week. And then I think I've got two episodes lined up. Next week, while I'm, you know, in that Boston area leading up to that first Patriots game, and then we'll just be keeping the ball rolling from there. And your first game is going to be the well, the first game is the Patriots, but then you're also going to go to the Jets game uh, against Buffalo on that Monday night. That's right. Yeah, it's back to back game days right there. So if you're in in New England at Gillette Stadium. Um, and you're attending the game, or you are going to the the Jets versus the Bills. And I got to say, Long Island is extremely excited for that one. That is a, a tilting game for Jets <laughs> fans and also Buffalo fans. They travel. So if you're going to be at, at MetLife or you're going to be at Gillette, get in Dario's DMs, uh, DM the main account, 
and you know, come say what's up to him because he's going to be in the stadium. He's going to be doing some cool stuff, and we love to meet people uh, from play- that that are that are player profiler subscribers and player profiler listeners. Dario, I'm sure the people that I'm putting you in touch with are are all above board and and not crazy. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's going to be good. But definitely come say what's up to Dario and look for it. So Dario and I are going to talk about some really awesome predictions that we have. Some of these ones are going to get you really hyped. Some of these ones might get you a little bit annoyed. Annoyed, but either way, these are going to be really, really fun. So we're going to first we're going to hear a word from our sponsors, and then we'll be right back. Hey, you're in your fantasy draft, and someone says, "Hey, that guy's injury prone. I don't want him." And you're like, "I don't know. I don't think you can predict injuries." Well, guess what? Now you can. Injury proneness is real. At Player Profiler, we have the data on these players, and it's all in the Injury Finder app. Their injury track record back through time, exactly where they were injured, how severe it is. We look at the BMI data, and we crunch it all together, and we give you probabilities that a player will miss multiple games this NFL season, as well as the complete database of NFL injuries and the ability to compare two players and look at their injury track record. The Injury Finder is powerful, and it's only 5 bucks. If it's worth it to have that peace of mind when you're drafting, go get it. Welcome back to Man vs. Machine. I am Theo Greminger, joined by Dario Ofstein, the host of Fantasy Football Across America and our director of analytics. Uh, Dario, we're, we're diving into it, man. This is going to be a high-scoring season, in my opinion. Taking a step Oh, back. yeah. A lot of, I, like, I think that there's a lot, a lot of, like, exciting offenses we have a couple of teams at the bottom that should struggle but i do think that this is a year where you're gonna have to score some points i think that we've seen like buffalo kansas city cincinnati philadelphia some of these like turbocharged offenses kind of lead the way and i think we're gonna see more of that this season so i'm gonna let you get us started give us a bold prediction for this season All right, I'm going to start us off with Keenan Allen finishes as a top five fantasy wide receiver and he breaks his career high for um, for total receptions in a season. His high is previously 106 and I think he, he can easily crush that. We haven't projected for 99 receptions, so it's almost not even that bold of a take, but we're really high on this Chargers offense. We know that Kellen Moore is going to elevate the tempo and elevate the pass volume and they're just going to be more dynamic altogether if keenan allen stays healthy this is a very reasonable outcome for him i think that he's a value in the third round of fantasy drafts right now i love it so keenan allen i I agree i've been drafting him a lot um we've had him we've had him you know ranked really highly at player profiler and that's a guy that i've been drafting a lot i think that i agree with you like we used to see him go at the tail end of the third, occasionally the early fourth. Now I'm starting to see him go at the beginning of the third. And I think that he can outscore, you know, the DK Metcalfs, the T Higgins, the Calvin Ridleys that are going in that range. And I completely agree with you on being, you know, extremely bullish on him. If he was simply 28 years old and not north of 30 in this situation, I think drafters would be all over him. So, you know, we're into the Stefan Diggs and Devonte Adams Tyree Kill and Cooper Cup range, but Keenan Allen is like still that that cheat code older wide receiver. So I love it. And I'll and I'll piggyback off of that one because my first prediction is Justin Herbert leads the NFL in passing touchdowns. He finishes with 45 passing touchdowns, which is not a massive, massive number for him. I think it's very attainable. Uh two seasons ago, he had 38 touchdown passes, and I think he leads the NFL in passing yardage as well. He's going to get north of 5,000. He'll have more passing yards than Patrick Mahomes. I think that the Chargers this year are going to be one of the highest scoring, if not the highest scoring offense in football. I think they go pedal to the metal, and I'll piggyback off of both of these. I think one year from now, Kellen Moore is going to be a head coach. I think that he's going to have one year in Los Angeles to go with the past two seasons he had in Dallas where he had teams in the top four in the NFL in, in, in points per game. Now he's going to have another team in the top three, uh, and he's going to have three straight seasons with that. So Justin Herbert will put up near quarterback one, if not quarterback one overall numbers. You're able to get him right now 
somewhere around like quarterback six in your drafts. Uh, he is definitely discounted when you compare him to the big three quarterbacks. And he also, in a lot of formats, is going behind Lamar Jackson, behind Joe Burrow. And once in a while, you see him go behind Justin Fields as well. So I think he's a tremendous value. I've drafted him a lot. And I think everything is setting up like a perfect storm. Dario gave you the Keenan Allen season. Mike Williams, you have Quentin Johnston. You also have Gerald Everett back for year two, who was very effective. You also have Austin Eckler out of the backfield. I think that this is going to be a really fun year for Los Angeles. Absolutely. I, I think, you know, the people need to know that we did not share, like we, we each formulated our hot takes here, our, our bold predictions. And we just both happened to create, to start off with Chargers ones. The first ones we both mentioned to each other were these Chargers ones. So if that doesn't tell you everything you need to know about that offense this season, I'm not sure what does. A conspiracy theorist might want to know where Dario is from originally. <laughs> what part of the country, Dario? Well, I grew up in L.A., but they were the San Diego Chargers. Okay, Fair. That, that, Southern they're... California <laughs> bias? Perhaps. Maybe. Maybe. I'm going to keep it going here. I'm going to keep – then you can. we'll go back to you. But I want cool, to stay cool. at the go wide receiver it. position. Okay? Aaron Rodgers, main wide receiver, his wide receiver one – has been one of the things we've bet on in fantasy for years and years and years. And this is a, like this is like every other year. Garrett Wilson is going to smash. But I think people don't understand just how quite how how much he is going to smash. We have seen Devontae Adams put up a 13 touchdown reception season in 2018. We saw Devontae Adams put up a 18 touchdown reception season in 2020. We saw Jordy Nelson, Dario, do it three times. 13, 14, and 15 touchdown receptions. This is going to be Garrett Wilson's massive touchdown season breakout. I think he leads all NFL players in touchdown receptions, and he finishes with 14 touchdown catches on the year. Garrett Wilson win rates in best ball. Garrett Wilson win rates for redraft. He's going to be like a cheat code for, for fantasy managers who were able to get him in the early half of the second round. What are your thoughts on my Garrett Wilson prediction? I I think it's on brand for you. <laughs> You've been touting Garrett Wilson all offseason. And I think, you know, we, we talked about our concerns with Aaron Rodgers and the Jets offensive environment as a whole, where he tends to slow down, you know, the pace of play. But like you said, even in those MVP seasons, he was able to get Devontae Adams cons consistently into top three fantasy wide receiver territory. I think it's very well within Garrett Wilson's range of outcomes. And I think 14 touchdowns is is not unreasonable at all. I mean, that's almost one per game, but Aaron Rodgers is going to throw those touchdowns to somebody and Corey Davis just retired. So there's, there's more volume headed that way. Yeah, and I think that you know, Garrett Wilson could be a guy who is putting up multiple touchdown weeks. I don't think this is going to be something where it's going to have to be like a touchdown every game consistency. Like he's the kind of guy we've seen him have massive weeks in his rookie season. Now we see the, the increased quarterback play, the higher quality quarterback play. Garrett Wilson, I think, is going to have a number of just unbelievable smash weeks, like 25 plus point PPR weeks, a 30 point PPR week here and there. Um, I think he's going to be the kind of guy that can save you your week. Um, and I think that that's the kind of guy that I really want for my redraft team. So I've pushed him up to the one, two turn a number of times. I think a lot of leagues, he's going somewhere like 11, 12. Um, but there's still leagues where you're seeing him go like 204, 203. Um, so I'm, I'm all in on the Garrett Wilson train. Dario, where are you at? Give us your next prediction. All right. So for my next prediction, it's going to slightly contradict your Justin Herbert prediction but I've got Trevor Lawrence leading the NFL in passing yards. I think he'll, you know, don't not, don't necessarily put have a number on here like you, like you did with the five thousand for Herbert. I think maybe forty seven hundred, forty eight hundred is what it takes for Lawrence to get there. I think that the presence of Calvin Ridley is going to open things up like crazy in this offense. Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, Zay Jones is still going to be a solid complementary weapon. I think they're going to deploy ETN and Bigsby really well out of the backfield. And we know that Doug Peterson's not afraid to have a massively high pass rate. So I think that the Jaguars are going to be very pass happy. 
They're going to easily cruise to their division title. And there's just, I think we saw the improvement of Trevor Lawrence from year one, disgusting Urban Meyer offense to year two, where he finally had a real coach in Doug Peterson. And now I think another full off season in that established environment, the presence of Calvin Ridley, I mean, who's been probably the training camp superstar of the NFL this off season. I think that Trevor Lawrence just goes absolutely nuclear. Yeah, I love it. I mean, I think Trevor Lawrence now is looking like kind of in his own little mini tier uh, for redraft managers. Um, he's showed in tremendous improvement from year one to year two, and that was his first season in a Doug Peterson offense. I think there's a chance that Doug Peterson opens things up a little more. We love the weapons. You know, you cited Calvin Ridley, but last year he was able to do quite a lot with Christian Kirk, with Zay Jones. They get Evan Engram back. I love the addition of Tank Bigsby. Uh, shout out, shout out to Cody Carpenter in the in the chat. He's a, put me on Tank Bigsby, you know, way, way, way back. And I've and I've Cody, you were right. You know, hat tip on that one. So I think that the fact is that they've got the horses for Doug Peterson to kind of open things up a little bit. I also wonder, Dario, last year was a de facto rookie season for Travis Etienne, where they didn't use him as a pass catcher. That could be something that could really unlock Lawrence even a little bit further where, you know, targeting the running backs out of the backfield, that might be something that, that Peterson will do as well. So I love it. I think, I think Trevor yeah. Lawrence, I, if you and miss on the Herbert, Herbert, Herbert tier, I think Trevor Lawrence is a great, great player to, to lean on. Definitely. And I think too, the fact that they're in the AFC, they're going to be, they won the division last year. So they're going to have a gauntlet of a schedule. They're going to be getting into these shootouts and the Jaguars don't have as good of a defense as some of these other AFC teams, like the Jets, the Bills. So I think that you're going to get a lot of games where Trevor Lawrence has to drop back and throw the ball 40, 50 times. And that plays a big part in getting him to this, you know, league leading passing yards, bold prediction. And I think that that gets him to a top three quarterback finish in fantasy. We've seen him display a little bit of his rushing ability. We know he's fast. We know he's good at avoiding sacks. So I think he squeaks out a few extra rushing touchdowns and gets that top three fantasy quarterback status with a breakout year. I love it. I love it. Um, shout out to the chat. It is lit right now. Joanna says Antonio Gibson stays healthy all year and finishes as the RB5. And then he signs with the Chargers in 2024. Really, gal <laughs> We're really galaxy braining that one. Shout out to Zhu Yang. Marvin Mims and Jalen Reed will finish as the two highest scoring uh, wide receivers from this draft. Uh, these are these are some lit. The, I mean, we're getting bold predictions everywhere, Dario, and we're going to keep it going here. Uh, it's that time so, of year. So listen, you know, my guy, my guy is Dalton Kincaid. So you know one of my predictions has to be Kincaid related. In 2021, Kyle Pitts had 176 PPR points. He finished as the tight end six overall. This year... Dalton Kincaid is going to finish with 185 PPR points. He's going to finish as tight end five overall. He is going to get over 90 targets. He is going to get seven or eight touchdown receptions. He is going to have a number of big yak plays, you know, coming off of advantageous uh, matchups where he's matched up on a linebacker and he's able to rip one for 25, 30 yards. This is the kind of guy that's going to help Josh Allen in the red zone. This is the kind of guy whose skill set does not overlap with, with Stephon Diggs. It does not overlap with Gabe Davis. This is a perfect situation for Dalton Kincaid. Dalton Kincaid, you're having to spend a relatively premium draft pick on him now. He's going off the board somewhere around tight end 12. So you're not getting a discount. But he's going to absolutely beat his ADP and give you an impactful season. If I miss on the Mark Andrews, Darren Waller tier, then I want to wait and see if I can't get Dalton Kincaid. And if I'm wrong, and this one is like Theo got this one way, way off, you're able to draft him at a portion in your draft that is not going to mess up your team. If you blame how you did in, in, the, in your draft by your, a failed 10th round pick, then you're not really doing it right because a lot of 10th round picks <laughs> fail. But with Dalton Kincaid, this is a bet on talent. This is a bet on situation. Don't let, for a minute, don't let the let you know those Chiefs Bills games didn't influence their decision to go get this elite tight end. We heard that the Bills tried to trade for Zach Ertz. 
years back when he was moved to Philly, or excuse me, when he was moved uh, to Zona. And I think that this is the kind of tight end that they could use like a Zach Ertz. I think Dalton Kincaid is going to come right out the gate and score. I want to draft him as much as I can uh, to end out draft season here. Dario, how crazy am I with my Dalton Kincaid 185 PPR points? I don't think it's too crazy. I think that it, it, it all depends on how the you know how much the the Bills just end up putting him on the field. But based on the preseason usage, it's been pretty good, and I think that there's a good reason for optimism there. I am actually a bit traumatized by Dalton Kincaid because I'm a USC fan. We're talking about you know local biases again, and Dalton Kincaid just absolutely shredding USC last season. It was. I, I have I wake up in a cold sweat sometimes from those games. So I I respect Dalton Kincaid. The guy's an absolute baller, and I, I can I like this this prediction for you, Theo. It's spicy. And- it gets people going. It's provocative. This is what bold predictions are all about. And shout out to Joanna in the chat saying if Kincaid does that, he's a top three tight end. Twenty four twenty four startups. I think even if he scores, you know, one hundred and sixty PPR points, one hundred and fifty. He's in that consideration because you're seeing the tight end Kelsey and yeah. dynasty. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, Brock Bowers. We got Brock, Brock Bowers is right around the corner. But if you look at our dynasty rankings on player profiler, like we're extremely bullish on this class and a quick, quick uh, math question. Kevin Amami is asking that are these 90th percentile outcomes? And he thinks that this is a 101st percentile outcome. Uh, for Dalton Kincaid, which I don't think is possible. I, I think that comment might have been about um, the the um, the Antonio Gibson conversation. Oh, okay, that, okay. That, that, I, I think that was where the hundred first percentile comment came in. Where I think it makes a little more sense there. <laughs> well, Dario, you've got a, a tight end prediction. Yeah, yeah. As well, well, staying with these spicy. rookie tight ends, I actually, much like you, if I miss out on the Andrews Waller tier, I am more than happy to wait and i actually like to wait a little bit longer because i think that sam laporta and luke musgrave both finish as top 12 tight ends this season i know it's spicy but these guys already have the route participation that you need to see from a tight end one they're both earning targets per route run in the preseason and both of these teams have absolutely no one else at tight end i mean tucker craft like it, it was Interesting to see how the Packers drafted two tight ends, but he's been immediately outclassed by Luke Musgrave and camp in the preseason. The reports have been absolutely glowing on both of these guys and both these teams spent elite draft capital. So we're finally getting over to the NFC for some of our bold predictions. And I think that both of these NFC North rookie tight ends finish in the top 12. So to go with Dalton Kincaid, we would call this a transformative tight end class. And I think that's what we've been talking about here on Man vs. Machine, on the Sonic Truth Dynasty podcast. Um, I know that we had a number of these tight ends very highly ranked, uh, you know, in, in in our dynasty rankings, and now we're starting to see it in redraft. This is a transformative class, and we don't like throwing around the word transformative for, for the dynasty perspective, but it really is. You, know, you talk about you have the perfect storm of older tight ends uh, with lack of middling tight ends that have really popped, and then you have this new class of, guys with top-notch draft capital and situations where they get to play right away. And I think that these kind of guys are going to flash. I also think it's interesting that Michael Mayer, um, you know, he might also have a situation where he's very effective in the second half of the season, Dario. So I'm with you on those, those three. I think that Musgrave has been like, we saw Kincaid rise up in drafts. We saw Laporta rise up in drafts. Laporta has been like in Fuego uh, recently, like he's been going near the tight end one line. And then we've actually seen Musgrave make, make big, big leaps. So like certain tight ends that were like the high end tight end twos have all kind of like, you know, people are a little less enthusiastic about them. And at the same time, we keep hearing very smart people like Jared Smola and Dwayne McFarland, you know, pounding the table for Luke Musgrave. Uh, Matt Kelly, the pod father was all over Musgrave in the draft process Shout out to Billy Muzio. Musgrave is from Bend, Oregon, where Billy Muzio lives as well. So we like that little connection to player profiler. Uh, and a quick shout out to, I saw this one in the chat. Somebody saying Laporta is more likely to uh, be the, the second leading uh, receiver on his team to Kincaid. 
the disrespect for Jameer Gibbs in this chat, Dario, uh, I, I can't even stand it. I can't, I'm not even going to put the comment on this on the screen because it really, really got me. Uh, we saw the the Orthodox Cactus said Christian Watson leads the league in receiving touchdowns. Uh, there's a lot of really, really good, uh, really, really good predictions in the chat right now. I love it, and we love Christian Watson. He could have easily been one of the bold predictions for me, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it in the in the NFC North. Amon Ross St. Brown right now is tied with Justin Jefferson and Michael Thomas for most receptions in the history of the league in a receiver's first two seasons. He has 196 receptions in two years as a pro. This ties, it puts him in incredible fantasy company with two guys who have finished at wide receiver one overall at the position in Michael Thomas and Justin Jefferson. Amon Ross St. Brown needs 129 receptions to break the three-year all-time NFL record. And he is going to get it, Dario. Amon Ross St. Brown is going to finish with 132 receptions. He is going to have a Cooper Cup-like target total from 2021. I don't think he's going to reach that quite that level of breaking fantasy. Um, I think he's going to have certain games where you know, this is going to be a, a target magnet, doesn't necessarily put up those touchdown numbers that will put him up with the Cooper Cup, but he's going to be very much in the mix for wide receiver one overall on the season, and he is going to set the NFL record for most receptions in the first three years of an NFL player. Uh, it's incredible. Amon Ross St. Brown was a fourth-round pick. He's really going to end up going down as one of the best wide receivers to come from day three. Uh, you know, he's going to have that Tyree kill and Stefan Diggs like season this year where he puts up a massive amount of PPR points. He gets 131 receptions. Detroit scores a ton of points. And Amon Ross St. Brown is a top five pick next year in PPR redraft. What do you say I, to that? I love it. He's I mean, we have him projected for 115 receptions. So it's the disrespect you, know, you and a, Billy have a stone's throw. Of, of this bold prediction here and him breaking that record. So, you know, we absolutely love Amon Ross St. Brown in our rankings. I'm pretty sure we've got him top. I think we have him sitting at number 10 overall right now. You should definitely be thrilled if you can get him at the one, two turn in your drafts. And I think that that, that bull case is uh, one that I would love to see. And I think is very, very much within the range of outcomes for Amon Ross this I year. Trade, I traded for him this morning in a dynasty league too. So Would I want to. Give I want to make. I gave up a, 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 a king's ransom. This team has a ton of wide receivers. This team has Tyree Kill. This team has Chris Olave. This has this team has DK Metcalf. This has, team has Terry McLaurin. Uh, this team had Devonta Smith, and I also had Kincaid, David Njoku, Pat Fryermuth. Um, and I made a big bold move. I truly believe in Amon Ross St. Brown breaking fantasy potentially this year, and I traded Devonta Smith. And I traded Pat Fryermuth, and I got back Amon Ross St. Brown and Dalton Schultz. I took a huge downgrade uh, at tight end in terms of dynasty, but I think that it's worth the risk for me because I think this team's going to win some money. And now I will have Amon Ross St. Brown with Tyree Kill and Chris Olave every single week. Oh, and this team has Amari Cooper too. So this is an incredibly deep wide receiver core. Um, and for me, I love Devonta Smith, but the target competition of A.J. Brown – and Dallas Goddard, and also the 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 Jalen Hurts with his rushing ability as a threat to kind of kind of cap his ceiling. I don't think there's a ceiling with Amon Rice Brown. So I think a lot of people will will hate that trade, but Dario, I love it because I got another Amon Ross and Brown uh, uh, share, and I still have a number of Devonta Smith dynasty shares, and now I got another Sun God. What do you think of that? I like it. I like it. I mean, the you know. I'm, I think we catapulted Amonra up to our wide receiver four in in Dynasty the other day, maybe even wide receiver three. Yeah, he's, we have him. Yeah, I think we do have him at three right now. It's a, it's an exciting time. Yeah, so so I like it for you. And then you know, staying with these elite wide receivers, I've got a fun one. I mean, no one's no one's going to push back here. This is this is purely kind of a recreational bold prediction. I think Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase can both break 2000 yards this season. It's never been done. Both of these guys have been very vocal about wanting to get there. And I think that 
they are just going to find themselves in the absolutely perfect environments. The Vikings are going to be worse this season. There's, they had so much luck last year, and they're going to continue funneling their offense through Justin Jefferson. I think TJ Hawkinson and Jordan Addison help open up the offense more. If you look at what Justin Jefferson did down the stretch when they had Hawkinson on the team, it actually led to more production from Justin Jefferson. And then Jamar Chase, we've already seen it from him. If he stays healthy all year, I mean, last year it was that hip injury. And when he was in the game, he he was absolutely tearing it up. There's a reason these guys are the consensus top two picks in fantasy this season. And I think that there's a chance that we see like a classic, I don't know, Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire type of deal going on where these guys are just chasing each other up the leaderboard to 2000 yards for both of them this season. Which is which player is Sammy Sosa and which player is Mark McGuire? And would Tyree Kill be Barry Bonds in this situation? <laughs> I, I think I think that you I would yeah. say Chase is Chase is Sosa and, Chase and Jefferson's Sosa, yeah. Maguire, Maguire. For yeah, sure. he's, got, he's got a little they're, they're both I feel like they both have more of Sosa's swagger. Um, but if you if you had to pick one, I think I think we I think we were in agreement there. Love it. I love it. Um, I love the bold prediction. I think that this that they both could hit that number. I think we talked about how it's pedal to the metal offenses, and I think that these two players are going to be leaned on incredibly heavily. And I think Jamar Chase, we also have to remember, is entering year three. And back in the day, Dario, year three was the year that, that people would circle for like wide receivers taking this massive step. Wide receivers have been breaking out so early that, that people to kind of discount that. But I think sometimes the game slows down for people and they see massive increases in, in year three. Chase also had to deal with an injury last year. He's perfectly healthy. And I think you also have going for you is I think wide receivers on Cincinnati in general are going to get targeted at a higher rate than they did last year. Uh, we saw last year uh, Hayden Hurst got his targets. We saw Samaj Piran get targeted out of the backfield. Joe Mixon set his uh, career high in receptions. I think this year it's going to be a little bit more consolidated with Chase and then a healthy dose of T. Higgins. You also have the fact that Tyler Boyd is getting older, and Tyler Boyd was certainly not the kind of fantasy pr producer last year that he was in years past, so it's it's Chase season. I love it. I think you take him at the 101, you take him at the 102, and just set it and forget it. Um, I have may or may not have taken Jamar Chase in my main event draft last night with Nelson Sousa. You're going to have to tune in at 6 o'clock tonight here to see us draft. Um, want to keep this going. This is my final prediction, Dario. We talked about the transformative class, this tight end class, and how this is going to change the, the scope of Dynasty. I've talked about Garrett Wilson, and we've talked about other wide receivers that are in year two at length right here on Man vs. Machine and across the Player Profiler uh, podcast network. The 2022 class is going to absolutely smash this year at the wide receiver spot. I think that there is going to be six players finishing inside of the wide receiver two line. George Pickens, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Jahan Dotson, Christian Watson, and Drake London all finish as wide receiver twos or better. A couple of these players are going to absolutely smash. All of them are values in ADP right now. So I'll repeat that. Garrett Wilson, I'll give it an ADP order. Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave easily. Both those guys finish as wide receiver ones. You also have Christian Watson will push for those numbers. Drake London is going to finish inside the top 15. George Pickens and Jahan Dotson both finish inside the top 24, if not the top 20 wide receiver scores and position. And as a bonus, Traylon Burks finishes inside of the top 30. He doesn't crack the top 24, but we see seven wide receivers in year two finish inside of the top 30 scorers at wide receiver. This is a transformative class. Draft these year two wideouts. Dario. I like it. I mean, we you just talked about the year two wide receiver breakout. It's been kind of pushed back a year or pushed pushed up a year, rather. Um, and we lo I love all these guys. I mean, Olave Wilson, obvious. Christian Watson putting up elite numbers. And then I think Pick Pickens is the one that I still have the hardest time, you know, getting completely in on but Dotson as well absolutely love it and I think Traylon Burks I mean once he once he's back up and running from this injury I, I agree with you there too so it's a very very exciting 
class of wide receivers. Apex predators don't have to separate when they're out in the wild, Dario. They just exist. And <laughs> well, that's you... George Pickens. <laughs> do you remember that uh that story when Traylon Burks was, I think it was right before the draft about him going like hog hunting in Arkansas with just a knife? Like that's that's I thought you were talking about Burks for a second there. That was absolutely wild. Well, Burks Burks has that has that dog in him and that alpha in him as well. I mean, it's a really, really good class, and they beat expectations in year one. And then you get this time of year and people start poking holes and poking holes and poking holes. Unsustainable touchdown rate, target competition, quarterback downgrade. But at the end of the day, talent in the NFL shines through and offensive coordinators scheme to get the ball in the hands of elite players. I think these are very talented players. I think Jahan Dotson, you're starting to see him get drafted in the sixth round. We were talking about what a value he was for weeks here on Man vs. Machine. All of a sudden, you know, the Terry McLaurin injury kind of woke people up to it. George Pickens was like, I'm not going to name names, but this is like the the there are certain uh, Twitter's, Twitter accounts that love to get analysts on bad takes. The amount of George Pickens hatred that we saw this offseason was borderline ridiculous. And, you know, preseason doesn't matter like a lot. But when a guy flashes like you're seeing George Pickens do in a limited sample size, like Pickens is a beast. I drafted him last night. I'm going to keep drafting him uh, if I could be wrong on this one. But I think that he's the kind of player like people used to talk about DeAndre Hopkins not being able to separate. Certain guys just win. I don't think he's I don't think he's DeAndre Hopkins. I'm not nuts. But I think he's going to finish inside the top 24. I think he's an alpha. I think his targets go up. And I think he finds different ways to win on the on the on the NFL field. And then those other guys we've all talked about. So seven inside the top 30, six inside the top 24. Dario, you're going to close it out. You're going to give us our, our last uh, our last prediction here. And shout yep. out to Jason Allwine. Burks has that hog in him, not that dog in him. <laughs> Incredible. Jason, hat tip. That's that's the best comment you've ever made here. Uh, the worst <laughs> comment, but I will give Jason a, 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 a thumbs down because the worst comment that he's ever made is this one. Matt Collins outscores Drake <laughs> London. Come on, man. Come on, Jason. Not happening. Not j- happening. Tune into Wake and Take every morning and check out Jason's takes. I'm sure he's not going to be saying Matt Collins outscores Drake London. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to close, close this out. out. We've got a league winner at running back. I think Devon A. Chain is a league winner down the stretch. The Dolphins have a week 10 by week 11 onward. Devon A. Chain is going to average 17 PPR points per game. He's going to be getting that perfect passing game deployment that we want to see he'll get five or six targets a game eight to ten carries he'll have some absolutely crazy spike weeks with long touchdowns i think that the situation is too good the coaching staff is too good his speed is too much of a threat he's going to be absolutely nuclear he's going to he's recovering from this preseason shoulder injury right now they're going to ramp him up slowly but i think by week eight it's going to be obvious that he's their best option in the backfield and then after the bye week they're going to pivot and just make him the you know snap leader in that backfield. And he is going to, like I said, he's going to be an absolute league winner, averaging at least 17 PPR points a game in those last 10, or I guess it would be the last eight weeks of the season. So Devon A-Chain, make sure you're still getting him by the dip right now as his price drops because of this preseason injury. I'm not worried. I think he's going to win a lot of fantasy managers, a lot of money down the stretch. I love it. And shout out to Stephen FL in the chat. He's asking about Waddle. Waddle, Dario, and I are both in on top 10 wide receiver this year. Love the Devon A chain that call, though, Dario. Devon A chain, I have bags and bags of him. Um, I, I love it. I love it. This is so much fun. <laughs> we're gonna ha- we're gonna have to get together um sporadically throughout the year and get some some man versus machine episodes in, Dario, when we see fit. But for those of you who have been tuning in all summer long, uh, this is this is the show is gonna go not away but it's going to be less often. Uh, it's more of a more of an off-season show, but this has been absolutely tremendous. Dario, maybe we'll get one in in September for the people. Um, but again, let everybody know about, about your new show coming out if they missed the intro. For sure. Yeah, so Fantasy Football Across America, brand new show. I'm going to be traveling, like it says, across the continent, meeting with all your favorite fantasy analysts, some of the biggest minds in the industry, some of the Roto Underworld faithful that you guys maybe don't get enough of in your podcast feeds. So we're just going to be highlighting the, you know, widespread phenomenon that is the fantasy industry. I'm very excited to be taking advantage of this opportunity while I'm out on the road. So I'm going to 
have the first episode of that up here on the player profiler YouTube, hopefully this weekend. And then I'm just going to be continuing to spam you guys with these super cool interviews with people across the fantasy industry. Very excited to have the official announcement out on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter, of course, at Dario Offscene and all our work over at Player Profiler, the rankings, the projections. Really excited for another NFL season here. No, it's going to be awesome. I can't wait for it. Uh, shout out to Steven in the chat. Wants to see my Sean Taylor plaque. My all-time favorite Miami Hurricane and Washington Redskin at the time was Sean Taylor. Uh, so I keep a plaque for him behind me. One of my favorite players of all time. And uh, you're the first person who's noticed that one. Everybody notices the Jamar Chase uh, one and the Travis Kelsey, Patrick Mahomes one. But I do have a Sean Taylor one right behind me. It's super cool. You noticed that, Stephen. Dario, I wish you safe travels. I, I think you're, you're going to absolutely crush it with this podcast. It's been a blast doing Man vs. Machine with you all summer long. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on Long Island, man. You're going to love it. Likewise, yeah. I'll, I'll see you again in person very soon. Yeah. You're never going to want to go back to California once you've seen Long Island. Everyone, <laughs> enjoy the rest of your, your days. If you're drafting, we hope you crush it. We hope you enjoyed this one today. Six o'clock tonight, press coverage, FFPC main event draft. Uh, I'm with Nelson Sousa drafting an FFPC main event. 10 o'clock tonight, I'm drafting with Billy Muzio in an FFPC Fantasy Pros 350. So we're drafting all week long. Uh, Billy's been drafting on the Dominator. This is going to be awesome tonight. I hope you are going to crush your leagues and uh, stick with Player Profile our season. Uh, we have a ton of new shows starting. Uh, it's going to be awesome. And everybody enjoy the year afternoons. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for tuning in. It's important to me that all of our media be free. This is only possible because of you allowing a true independent sports media enterprise to thrive unlike any other in the business. So please subscribe to the All In Package to continue to make all this possible to ensure that all of our stats, information, data, content is available to you, especially you, the people that get the site and get the show.